Hey viewers, welcome back. I'm here working on this 2012 Volkswagen Jetta GL with a 2.0 liter engine. This vehicle got towed in a couple of days ago uh, and I'm finally able to check it out. But the customer stated that the vehicle is running really rough. It has low power. The, supposedly the checkage light tends to flash and it smells like raw fuel. All right, so before we begin with any physical checks, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the scan tool to verify if there's any code stored in the computer. All right. All right guys, so I'm here inside the vehicle. I got the scan tool already hooked up. I'm gonna show you guys real quick the mileage. This vehicle has about 272,000 plus miles. Could we have a potential mechanical problem? Who knows? And we'll see. All right, so like I said, the scan tool is already hooked up. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and select the engine electronics. I'm gonna go ahead and check the DTCs. Yeah, you can see it has a P0300, random multiple cylinder misfire detected, and a P0301 cylinder one misfire detected. So can this, can this be, due to one cylinder affecting the rest of the cylinders who knows I mean, like I said I'll have to do some checks so now let's try to and, and also verify the customers complaint about the flashing check engine light so before we do that let's go ahead and go into the read data stream read by channel list I mean uh, read by list so I'm going to select the ones. Hopefully this vehicle does have some misfire pits to verify if there's only the cylinder one or, is it, or if it's multiple. There you go. It does have it. So one, two, three, only four. I'm going to go ahead and select OK. All right, so the next step is to go ahead and start the vehicle and check to see if this vehicle is running rough. So here you go. A little extended crank the vehicle does sound and it's starting to smell like raw fuel or like a misfire on either one or more cylinders As you can see here on the scan tool for cylinder number one it is misfiring constantly so we're over 200 counts already so that that already tells me that there's only one cylinder that's causing this P0300 and a P0301 now let's see if the check engine light starts flashing I'm actually accelerating the, the accelerator the higher the RPMs the louder the misfire you know, I don't want to run the vehicle for too long with this misfire. You know, I don't want to cause damage to the to the catalytic converter. There you go. The check engine light came on. The counter reset back to zero. Now it's back. It's, go, it's going back up again. But I don't see the check engine light flashing. Pretty much when it flashes, it's, it's telling you that there's a potential problem or potential damage to the catalytic converter there you go slashing so we have already confirmed that the vehicle does have a misfire so far on the scan tool it shows that it's number one so next step is to go out there and do some uh, checks is it ignition is it the uh, ignition coil is it the uh, ignition wires is it the spark plug or is it fuel related such as fuel injector and last but not least worst case scenario mechanical perhaps compression or valve issues all right all right guys so i'm here under the hood so a little quick history the customer stated that someone else tried to diagnose the problem they, he said that they did replace the ignition coil as you can see it looks brand new 
but they didn't replace the plug wires or the spark plugs. So I'm gonna go ahead and perform a little quick check just because it's a new ignition coil, especially when it's aftermarket. It, does, it doesn't not it doesn't mean that it's good. So I, I will perform a little quick check at the ignition coil number one, and and then I will also perform another check to see if you have a good spark at the other end of the plug wire. All right, so let me set up and I'll show you guys. All right guys, so I'm already set up here. I got my test light. I'm using a regular bulb type test light, not an LED. So make sure you use one with the light bulb. I'm connected to chassis ground, not to battery negative to avoid any potential explosions. So what I, I'm gonna do is remove the plug wire that's connected to the number one ignition coil here. So it's the one that has the letter A. Hopefully the camera can pick it up. Let me try to zoom in. It's right there, that's your coil number one to your number one spark plug. All right, so the next step is to put the test light inside the ignition coil tower here for the number one cylinder and start the engine. So let me go ahead and start the engine for you guys. All right guys, so with the engine already idling, the dick was shaking a bit, it is misfiring. So now, the test here is to remove the test light about an inch away from the uh, ignition coil tower here. As you can see, that's a nice even spark right there. It's not cutting off, so we know it's not the ignition coil on the number one tower here. So we could eliminate a brand new coil, ignition coil as a potential problem. So the next step is to go ahead and test the other end of the plug wire to see if it's uh, reaching a strong spark. Potentially, like I said, the customer did say that he did not replace the spark plugs. Perhaps we might have a potential bad plug wire. All right, so let me set up and I'll show you guys. All right guys, so for this next step, like I said, I'm removing the other end of the uh, ignition wire that goes to the spark plug. I'm using a, my test light. The test light is inside the, the spark plug boot. So the next step is to go ahead and start the engine. All right guys, so with the engine idling once again, I'm gonna go ahead and remove, remove the uh, test light about an inch away. As you can see, it is sparking. But the more, the more I put the test light away from the uh, spark plug boot, you see that our spark pretty much goes away. It's not really jumping. It doesn't really have a strong jump to the test light. But if I go in, then we do hear that it's producing a, a spark, but not a strong spark. So I think we found the problem here, guys. We do have a faulty ignition wire. It probably has some type of corrosion or resistance in the wire that's not allowing the spark or to produce a strong spark to the, uh, the spark plug. It's jumpy, but like I said, it's not strong enough. So the best thing is to compare this one to another one. So I'm gonna compare the number one to the number four since it's easier to test it and watch the difference. All right. All right guys, so I'm comparing the number four plug wire to the number one. We saw that the number one was producing a spark, but it was a weak spark. So I'm thinking that's the reason why we're having that P0301 a faulty ignition wire but as you can see what a difference as I remove the test light from inside the, the boot 
you do see a nice strong spark that's able to reach uh, about an inch of gap there you go hopefully the camera can pick it up it's a nice strong spark All right, so I guess we found a problem, guys. It was it's a faulty ignition wire on number one. So the customer should have replaced the plug wires at the same time. I will check the condition of the spark plug since he said that he didn't replace that either. All right, so I'll, so so I'll be the next thing to check the condition of the spark plugs and maybe perform a a tune-up, replacing the spark uh, the spark plug wires and the spark plugs the same time now all right all right guys so i've already removed the spark plug number one and spark plug number four so i'm doing some comparisons here just right off the top i could really see that the spark plug number one the center electrode seems to be more rounded off than the than the number four so these spark plugs will have to get replaced let's compare number four now you see how the number four center electrode which is right here on the, the that little tip right there Seems to be more squared off. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up. There you go. You see the flat surface on top of the, on the tip of the center electrode. Seems to be more flat, more squared off than the number one. That one seems to be more rounded off. So these are worn worn down spark plugs that will have to get replaced along with the spark plug wires. So this is going to be pretty much an easy diag uh, diagnosis here. Faulty ignition wire to the number one spark plug is causing a weak spark, a weak spark to the number one cylinder, which is causing the P0300 and a P0301. Like I said, the customer did replace the, well, not the customer, but someone replaced the ignition coil, thinking that that that, that was the issue, but in reality, it's the wire. So let me confirm this with the customer. If he wants me to replace the wires and spark plugs, and I'll bring you back with the fix. All right. All right, guys. So after talking to the customer, the customer did approve to go ahead and replace the plug wires and the spark plugs. For those that want a part number, here we go. It's 9138. For spark plug, for spark plugs, part number is 79104. It's a Bosch brand. All right, guys, so just to confirm the fix, I'm going to go ahead and just replace the one plug wire, for, you know, for the one cylinder, which is for number one. Now I'll use a scan tool to check the pits for the misfires and show you guys that we pretty much fixed the problem by just replacing the faulty plug wire. But at the same time, we should also replace the, the spark plug since we saw that they were pretty much worn out to prevent any future problems with the, maybe a faulty in, in ignition coil going out due to worn out spark plugs all right so let me go ahead and just replace the one plug wire and show you guys the fix all right all right guys so this is a fix here like you see i'm showing you guys the uh the misfire count one through four the number one is no longer misfiring it's stuck at zero there's a brand new plug wire right here this is the old one you see the old one here the new one's right there so that's pretty much the fix a simple replacement of a plug wire at the same time like i said i'll be performing the spark plug replacement and all brand new plug wires all right so hopefully you guys learned something enjoyed the little quick diagnostic video this is eli Dobri tech subscribe you like Alright guys, so this is a little quick bonus video, you know, just to show you guys the difference on the spark jump on the plug on, on the plug wire. There we go. As I remove the test light further out, you do hear that the spark is able to jump that big about a about an inch of gap. And what a difference on the sound of the spark. It's much louder than before. So there you go.
The next step I'm gonna do is just uh, compare the resistance between the, the old and the new on the number one plug wire. Okay, so I'm checking the resistance from the new plug wire. I'm using the ohmmeter, connected to one end and the other one to the other end of the plug wire. The resistance of a new plug wire is about 6.18 kilo ohms. Remember, this is an aftermarket, so it's gonna vary from a original plug wire here. Let's see what this one reads out. This is not really an accurate test. You know, when you measure out, measure the resistance, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Because this is done with the stress. You know, when the plug wire is stressed, when you, and when you check resistance, it's not really being stressed with heat and all that voltage, you know, going through the plug wire. So let's see what happens, you know, with this resistance on this faulty plug wire. Let me set up and I'll show you. Okay, right, so this is with the faulty plug wire being ohmed out. As you can see here, it shows about 6.08 kilo ohms. It's not too bad. But I think that at this plug wire, it's being, it's going bad when it's being stressed out. It's not able to deliver the sufficient spark to the spark plug. So like I said, sometimes it's ohm resistance checks are not too accurate. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Peace out.